to everyone. I am Oscar Monsalve, I'm Dojo Cho uh, here in the Home with Joe in Valencia. Uh, we're here uh, for a new video on Kyujutsu because I've been given the opportunity to ask to my master, uh, Shidoshi Luis Nogueira, uh, a little uh, about this interesting and protected art in, in our school, uh, given the fact that I'm going to graduate as a sensei uh, and, and uh, so. Uh, I'm so so interested in this in this in this spectacular art, and uh, and uh, Sidoshi Luis Nogueira has given me the opportunity to to ask some questions to him. The first question that I would like um, to share with all of our followers would be about um, the the bow the bow we use in Kyujutsu in Ogawa Ryu. Uh, I, I've been very surprised. I think uh, maybe some of you have been surprised as well because the, the bow we are using is not the traditional Japanese yumi. And then uh, Shidoshi Luis uh, could you tell me a little more uh, why do we use this different uh, bow and, and what is the anthropological origin of, of it? Oh, uh, first of all, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to perform this uh, new My Experience video of this series. This is the fourth one. And thank you for maybe doing a second one in Kyujutsu because it's a subject that I like especially. This question that you are asking to me, it's very, very uh, nice, very particular because maybe the most of the people that take a look on or uh, when we are performing Kyujutsu, sometimes it seems, well, okay, but this is not a Japanese bow. Uh, it's, uh, this, is not, uh, this is not right, but we have to take a look that in the ancient times the seasoned people don't have uh, this kind of asymmetrical bow. I explained in my past class about it, but I would like to, to remark about it because um, the seasoned culture and all the most northern people in the ancient Japan they were more influenced by the Ainu and of course by Siberian tribes and uh, the way they use and they employ uh, the bow was more asymmetrical and a bow that it's more like a, a curved bow that not the most typical asymmetrical bow that we use in Japan. Of course when the season were uh, were spread by the Japanese geography and people society. They, of course, started to use the traditions and the way in Japan they were used. Then all the techniques were applied after this from the season bow to a Japanese bow, an asymmetrical bow. And of course, then you could take a look that in our tradition you could employ the most correct symmetrical bow or also by, by adaptation, uh, employ what is the Japanese asymmetrical bow. Is to say, both ways are right, but of course, taking in, having in mind that uh, uh, each of them has the reasons for employing in different things. For example, if we employ for a hasetsu, more a way for a ritual way of, of uh, throwing, not for religious rituals, but or religious rite, but for um, especially um, these uh, these uh, this kind of uh, regular way of of, uh, of throwing, of firing, of shooting, of course you could do it uh, for for this more Japanese bow. But the most traditional is the the symmetrical one. Very much, and Then there is a, a historical fact or an historical. Uh, Question because of this, uh, I mean, there was a point in the history of, of, of season culture uh, when they uh, got together with Japanese aristocracy. Maybe uh, could you tell me about this? I think, yeah, it's, it's a nice question. Uh, instead, this takes us to other point. Hi. The season uh, where, uh, where uh, people living in the northern side of Japan that they were a mix of racial mix of several uh, uh, several ethnies okay. then uh, when they uh, started to be threatened by the Japanese in the Edo period they decide 
decided to uh, to mix to, with the Japanese, then in fact they started to reach different points in the Japanese society, and of course some of them reach a noble situations. In fact, the Misi that they were ancestors of what uh, the system were, uh, the Misi sometimes uh, get uh, allied with the with the with the sovereignty. Uh -huh. uh, then, after this, they became also lords of some uh, areas, some regions of the north side of Japan, for example, Tohoku, and they remain as lords. Then, of course, they could reach a noble uh, positions in the society of Japan. Then, of course, all traditions of, uh, of Japanese traditions were also linked with the citizens, with the citizen tradition, when they mix with the Japanese society, okay, so they adapted and they got mixed with aristocracy and shared tradition. Uh, this is in fact what it's what we are calling buge in Kasenoriu because oh, it's the you. adaptation of the citizen traditions to the Japanese way, and of course also uh, the information, the knowledge that uh, the citizen uh, has uh, understood of the Japanese. Uh, way. Oh, yes. I've got um, a more technical question uh, I've heard about in those videos and, and on all the materials about um, three kind of techniques or, or, or way to, to shoot. Uh, they are called Ito, Nito and, uh, and Joto. And I would like to ask you if it's possible about this, these techniques and the differences and, and that kind of it's a very nice question. I have explained on my on my past video about Kyujutsu that <clears throat> there are three main forms of employing the, the yumi, employing the, the the ball. That they were as you have named Ito, Nito and Yoto. Uh, these uh, in reality when we are talking about Wungaku is to say when we are talking about strategy uh, they were three different roles of the bowman, is to say, uh, de depending on the the role the warrior it has or the bowman it has, uh, he will develop different different uh, positioning, different type of uh, of suiting, etc. In fact, the one that they were higher class or more experienced bowman. They used to remain static and get uh, uh, and started to do uh, repetitive shots. So say they started, they, they remain in a position, or they were in this way, and they were throwing one after one. Is to say like the way I explained. But the other one that they were younger or more uh, or because they were in more risk situation and started to move forward in order to uh, gain space, in order to, to move. And then the higher class started to perform what it's called Yoto, that it's remaining, repeating shots in the same situation, in the same ah. circumstance. Okay. The second, the second uh, one, it's in the floor. The first one is the Ito, that they were the one that Prepare the arrow, go to the round, shot, move forward, preparing the arrow, and set the round moving forward. This is Hajio. Mm -hmm. And at the end we have the Nito, that is the ones that they started to run away. To so say they throw and go backwards. It's uh, in this kind of situation they have the Gungaku because Two main ways of applying this is what it's called Chokusen or Kosa. For example, I will explain after that uh, if we, uh, if I remain here on this position, I, okay, I am the Yoto, we have partners that they were starting to run on Ito on my sides, here and here, and they were run in Chokusen, is to say in parallel lines, in order I am firing one after one, and they have conditions to advance and gain space uh, in order to reach the enemy, so it's making the other to go backward. But for example, if they are hidden, 
or they are in a good position firing us, I could remain repeating as a Yoto several times and at the same time in order to confuse our position the Ito start to run in a diagonal that is called or cross line that is called Kosa because they cross to one side to the other and this means that the other won't know what is happening because after they are crossing in different a very different situation I am firing again then oh, okay. they don't know where to put the arrow where to put the the, the right. target so so um, the more graduated would be in Joto would be here and the other ones would be going running, there, running at the side in space. space and maybe moving in, in this situation right. also the Nito will come back in order to protect the Yoto and making different situations. Ah, in okay, fact, the Yoto, they were the ones that have the most protected because they are also protecting the other because the other are more risky uh, roles because need to run and uh, uncover. The other could be also Yoto, it's not only exposed. It could be also uh, protected and hidden by maybe the, the, the forest because these are is employed in the forest then you need to know oh, that the trees are around okay then of course the Yoto is protected by some obstacles trunks or, or barriers uh, natural barriers that give the conditions to start to sort, sort, sort uh, having control and the other are the moving uh, the moving targets uh, going again to Ito, Nito and Yoto, we have to say that there are several interpretations because also they say that the Yoto were especially, or this kind of, of fire is especially uh, developed for uh, trying to, uh, to, uh, to pierce the armor. There need to be a more uh, deep, a more deep way of 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 uh, of releasing the arrow, of uh, making tension to the uh, to the to the to the bow in order to um, to attain to to be incapable to break the armor and pass. Ito it's also known for being very precise because the idea of the training of Ito it's to uh, reach in a in a special point what they are firing. And Nito, it's known to be several very, very fast, uh, very fast uh, slaughter, because they repeat, repeat, repeat with a uh, very quick, with a good speed. Then this is other visions, but we are talking about in some place what is the and the the roles, and the other is the characteristic, the skills that they need to have in this way. So if, if I understood it properly, um, when you are doing a Joto row, uh, the aim or the objective is to sh shoot fast and uh, to, to cover the other people. You not shoot in the same place, but the, by this idea you have to, per, uh, to perforate, to, okay. to pierce deeper because you have the condition, but of course you need to do it also fast. Ah, okay, I understand. And in Ito? Uh, would be a would be an more more precise. precision okay. precision because this you are moving and you need more precision, but of course this is also uh, reminds us about uh, the what it's called uh, yukigumi fusetsu and fu that it's other other thing other more advanced theories in kyujutsu for line. Hi. Yeah, I, w I was wondering actually about about uh, these concepts because. Uh, this we were talking about is moving on the battlefield, but maybe uh, weather conditions could affect the way you the way you shoot. And in this concept, I think they talk about this this stuff. You are you are arriving to a very good point. Is to say this is the the main thing uh, regarding what we are talking about. What it's called yukigumi, fusetsu, and fu. These three different forms cover. Uh, different circumstances and situations regarding the environment. 
to say concerning uh, what are the weather it could be applied different ways of suiting is to say suiting it's not restricted to one way of doing it this is only for ritual purpose when we are talking about hunting over about war it depends what are the needs we have in the battle in the battlefield for example <clears throat> Uh, when we are talking, uh, we are saying that uh, we fight in the forest, but in the forest we could find these several uh, weather conditions. For example, Yuki Gumi was thought about uh, uh, when we are inside a situation with snow and very cold. This makes that, uh, of course, your, uh, when you start to, to move your body, it's difficult because maybe you have snow around and you are not stable. This makes that you need some harage exercises in order to condition your body. Okay, then we have here a target. We are gonna perform the three different forms regarding Yukigumi, Fusetsu and Fu. The first one I am gonna explain you, I'm gonna uh, execute right now, demonstrate, it's the uh, Yukigumi. Hi. Only remember that Yukigumi means it's about precision, about uh, the location, the place you are looking for in order to, to be uh, safe from sliding, to be safe from this and looking for precision. Then Hi. it will be my idea right now. Okay. okay. Then from here we move, look for the position, locate properly, and right now we need to go down looking for the way. Going up. First one. After this, we locate here, move up, move in, looking for the next position, put properly in the tsuru. Here, going down, up, look, look for the precision, move up, one more time, this is my last advance here, okay, put, fire, one more time, go up, I cannot run more because I am so close to the, to the target, right now, look for the position, and fire, again, looking for precision. This is... After watching the Yukigumi uh, demonstration, Yukigumi techniques, let's go to Fusetsu. In this, uh, in this uh, technique, we need to remember, to remark, that uh, Fusetsu is involved when uh, the snow and the wind is pushing us. Hi. Then uh, what we need to do is after locating, after placing the uh, after placing the arrow, we have to do it very fast, the, the shot. We don't, we don't have time to, to, to put uh, the target in the right way. We need to locate before and after this, firing very, very fast. Then, please uh, keep in mind this in order to this execution. Then right now, first one, let's go locate and from here, First one, move in, after, okay, clear, second, okay, right one, more time, and we have it. After watching Yuki Gumi and Fusetsu techniques, let's go to Fu, that means win, I have, as I have explained. Uh, and it uh, concerns the idea of having wind against you or aside you and uh, rain. The rain means that it could be humid and of course your string, your tsuru could slide. Then you need a position to, to grip. Right now we are not gonna do it in that way, okay? But this is a part of this technique. What we are going to uh, to remark or to to look carefully at this technique is the idea of making a whipping technique to empower the arrow. Why? Because a win aside could take you out of direction the arrow that you are wanting to fire to suit. Then uh, let's go. 
in order to, to perform this whipping technique, in order to generate more tension on the string, more tension on the bow, in order to, to empower the arrow. Let's go for the demonstration. Place the arrow, and from here, looking for the Time, more tension, and